All right, guys, quick sidebar before the video starts here on the go-kart stuff. Now, I want to kind of fill you guys in and give you the lowdown of what I've been up to over the past few months. And um, I know I've been a little bit absent from posting videos on the YouTube channel and stuff on my Instagram, but it's because during this whole uh, stay-at-home stuff, when that happened, I did anticipate on making a ton of videos. But actually, my wife and I chose to use this time to dedicate towards doing a lot of stuff around the house and in particular in the backyard. And one of the big things was is we wanted to really revamp our backyard because uh, back in this area before was just a ton of trees and it was really unusable and it was really hard to maintain and keep clean from all the leaves we get back here. Um, so we decided to make it more usable and we built this deck here. And so it's been quite time consuming. We built this from the ground up and did it all ourselves. Um, and it's been a very uh, tiring process, but it's been an awesome learning process. And I basically just uh, attended YouTube University, so to speak, and learned the ins and outs of building a deck. Um, and for my first time doing something of this magnitude, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's very level and it's very sturdy. Like I feel confident with 25 people on this deck. It's 14 feet by 14 feet. Um, but yeah, so I know this isn't really themed towards the typical like automotive related content I put on the channel, but it is a cool kind of DIY project that I've been doing. And I just kind of want to show you guys where I've been spending my time over the past few months because it's been uh, quite the time consuming project. I mean, I started actually, we cleared all this out from the trees and then we kind of got a rough idea of the size. I actually designed it in SolidWorks. So I'll put a screenshot of my design from that. And then that gave me my bill of materials and we went to the lumber yard and got a ton of redwood. This is all made of redwood, nice quality redwood and uh, started building it. So um, it was fun. It was definitely challenging challenging part was getting all these concrete footings spaced apart from one another you know consistently um, seven feet from each other on center and then I used a, my buddy's laser level to cut the post to all the right height so that really helped to make sure the deck was level and then there's three four by six beams going across this way and then there's uh, a total of like 26 joists I think or more than that I think but uh, then the joists go this way and then obviously the deck boards on top and we just finished putting the deck coating on the top. Um, and then the last step is I'm gonna be putting kind of like a waist high metal railing that goes from about here all the way around the back and then on this side to about here. And then I'm gonna build one more set of stairs on this side. But anyways, um, I know it's not really typically related to the stuff we put on the channel here, but I have been spending a lot of time doing this. So I just wanted to show you guys kind of what I've been up to. So now I will go on to the go-kart content that I've also recorded um, over the past few months. And just another quick sidebar, a little update since I recorded that last clip. This is the most recent progress of the deck. So it is pretty much done. We're putting the last coat of deck coating on the railing up there, um, but it is pretty awesome. And the next step for the backyard here is we're gonna have turf put all over here, but I will not be doing that because I'm ready to start doing more car projects and less house projects. Okay, so here's an update for everyone on what I've been doing on the go-kart. So first being I welded in some reinforcement gusset plates on the front suspension arm uh, spindle joints. So you can see here the previous uh, spindle joint was just supported at the very bottom here. So I want to add in this triangled um, gusset plate to re really reinforce this since all of the force is going up right here and there's a lot of uh, stress on this one little part here. So this is really going to reinforce that. Um, and on that side, obviously, as well. Um, so it was a good opportunity for me. I was uh, I broke out my new titanium welder from Harbor Freight, just another flux wire welder. I didn't want to have to deal with the uh, complications, or not complications, but just the added um, uh, steps of getting an argon tank and keeping it refilled. I don't weld enough to see the benefit from that. So this welder will do me pretty well. I was pretty happy with it so far, but I'm still definitely learning the settings on it and because um, it is it does perform better, but it performs differently from the previous welder I've had. Um, so I did that on the front. And then the other notable noticeable uh, change I did here was I welded in, cut and welded in these reinforcement um, trusses on the main part of the frame here. So that's another thing too, is like a lot of the weight, since you sit right here, 
a lot of the weight's going down right here, so it's really good. Um, this triangulation between the area where the engine mounts to to the middle part of the frame is really gonna help stiffen the frame, um, at least bending up and down or uh, front to back uh, wise. So that was another piece here. Um, in the future, I'm gonna, gonna clean up and adjust some of the welds on all of those pieces. And then today, I'm actually working on um, adjusting the um, engine mounting plate and how the engine mounts. So this is my mounting plate that I've had ever since I built the go-kart from the beginning. And in the beginning, I had it set up with these slots here so I could move the engine forward and back to tighten the chain. But when I got the torque converter, I had to move the engine over um, because it, it uh, contacted the plate here. So I ended up having to drill holes in here and part of this goes through the frame and that just, uh, it was hard mounted so I couldn't move the engine back and forth. So now I'm gonna be working on cutting out some slots and making all these four points into slots so I can move the engine back to tighten the chain um, when I get it mounted. So that's what I'll be working on today. Okay, so we are done for today. So what we did was I notched out the engine plate to get the slot shape that we needed to be able to adjust the engine position to tension the chain. And we also slotted the holes on the piece of the frame that the, uh, the plate kind of rests on there below, you can see. And I just mocked up the engine there and everything looks nice. Some of the holes came out or the slots came out a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Um, it's not super critical. Um, we're going to be good anyways because that's going to get tightened down really nice and snug. Um, but now this is going to allow us for a lot greater adjustability in the engine position to uh, tension the chain versus before I had a bunch of washers stacked vertically, which was just a horrible way to do it. So this is, again, one of the different ways that I'm kind of revamping the go-kart to make it more reliable and robust and uh, usable uh, to be able to adjust the chain. So that's a pretty... Uh, necessary feature to have if you're building a go-kart.
So the plan for today is to continue working on the to-do list to get this go-kart back up and running from the rebuild that I'm working on right now. But in, in particular, what I'm gonna be doing today is a lot of metal fabrication again. Um, what I have here, you guys might recognize this if you've been watching the go-kart build videos for a while now, is the active aero wing assembly um, that I built uh, probably about two years ago, three years ago, I don't know, I can't remember. Um, but it was something that I used for a little bit on the go-kart, but I never really fully liked it. Um, it was a little clunky. It basically used a cable system to attach to the brake pedal to mount, and then it would pitch the wing when you're braking. Um, but it had some drawbacks and uh, something that I don't really want to use right now, um, but it's definitely like having a wing on the go-kart I think would be cool. So I might revisit uh, the design at some point later on. But there's a few points on here, like these little brackets um, that I'm going to... Uh, kind of pull off of this to use. I'm gonna basically put those, I'm gonna try and put those under here to kind of just reinforce that little joint and maybe add a little bit of a cool touch because it's got some cool holes cut out on here. Um, and then that would also add a mounting point for anything I wanna um, add on to because it's got those holes on those brackets. And then I'll be doing a few other things um, metal fabrication wise today. I'll probably be, I'm gonna be cutting out this rear section here and just making it a little bit more simple. Um, the other thing too is since uh, I modified how the um, engine's gonna mount with the, the slots, I need to see uh, where the torque converter is gonna hit in relation to the frame, the back part. So that's why I'm gonna be redoing that to see if I need to kind of make a new uh, design in the back there. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start by disassembling this and then we'll go ahead and whip out the welder and start cutting things apart and welding stuff. I had to cut a little bit off the top because it didn't mate up with the, the weld on the inside, but I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to trace this uh, cut over the other one and then we'll do the same thing and then we'll weld it on. So I got some of this nozzle gel. It's a common thing to use when you're welding with flux wire, just to kind of help prevent the spatter from building up on the tip of the gun and then also on your part. So I'm gonna, never used this stuff before, but I've heard it works, you know, somewhat decently. So I'm gonna try and spread some nozzle gel around the area I'm working and also on the tip of the gun to see if that helps at all um, while I'm welding. And it sucks because when you weld, obviously you don't wanna get sunburned and it's like, probably 75, 80 degrees today, and I'm in sweatshirt and shorts, or uh, jeans. So uh, I'm gonna have to try and do this part rather quickly so I can get out of the sweatshirt because it's hot. the other one and then we'll fully weld them in but uh probably gonna have to rotate the go-kart on its side because it's really hard to get these angles underneath
spent a little bit more time uh, cleaning up some of the welds on the front control arms. Now, again, they're not perfect. I'm not a fabrication god. Um, I'm still very much learning. And this is a quite an awkward uh, place to weld because it's in like a pocket. So it's really hard to get in there and get a clean weld because sometimes, you know, with these flux welders, you get a lot of spatter. I've tried messing with the settings, but sometimes there's only so much you can do. Um, so then I just went in as best I could with the angle grinder and the wire brush wheel and just tried to clean it up. Uh, the thing I'm looking for, I mean, this is obviously going to painted, so it's not like going to be perfectly aesthetically pleasing, but it's going to be strong for sure. I mean, it's way stronger than what it was before, because if you haven't seen this before, it was basically I had this down tube that went right to this uh, C spindle here and um, or the c bracket for the spindle and without this gusset and now i added in this gusset here so it really reinforces the um the front control arm because that's where a lot of the uh forces are coming through uh when you're driving this thing and it's uh, absorbing load and all from the driving and whatnot so they definitely look better than they were before not perfect but um pretty happy with those so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna load up the frame onto the welding table again. I got some Sawzall blades. So I'm gonna, uh, well, first I'm gonna check the clearance with the motor on the back of the go-kart and figure, and that'll tell me um, kind of how I need to build the rear of the go-kart to uh, give the clearance for the torque converter given that it's gonna have to slide forward and backward with those uh, slots now. One thing I've been wanting to do, and a lot of people have asked this in uh, videos in the past and comment section, is how much this thing weighs. And I did weigh it before um, when it's fully dressed, wheels, tires, all the bumpers, seat, you know, everything on it, minus the engine. I think it comes in about 170 pounds. Um, and keep in mind, the engine plate and the pedal plate probably weigh, I'd say, about 50 pounds. Um, eh, maybe not that much maybe like 30 pounds together. So 170 pounds and then uh, the engine weighs about 35. So I think it comes in a little over 200. Um, but in the future, maybe I'll do another weight test just to kind of re-verify that. Okay, so I got the engine on there with the torque converter and it looks like it's going to be okay with the uh, clearance wise um, so right now the engine is in the setting where it would be the farthest back um, based on the slots so and the torque converter doesn't look like it would have any problem hitting i didn't think it would um, but i just wanted to double check but what i might do is i might just i think when i built this originally it was just a straight bar across and then when I, and that was when I was using a centrifugal clutch. And then when I added the torque converter, I had to make this notch here, um, cause obviously it sits below. And unless I put the engine up higher on like spacers, um, it was gonna have an issue clearing. And then when I welded this stuff in, I think uh, it warped the uh, metal a little bit. So it just pulled it down slightly. You can see it's uh, not level, just ever so slightly, but I think I'm not, I don't want to create more work for myself here in something that really doesn't matter. And I, I like to look at the back here with the, the triangulated pieces. Um, I mean, they are kind of for strength, but more so just for looks. What I think I'm going to do though, um, just to give myself a little more clearance. Um, okay. So the one thing I forgot to do is I did want to throw the torque converter cover on here. Cause that is something that I'm definitely going to rock, uh, when we're driving this thing. Cause the last thing I want happen to happen is for the belt to break and, uh, slap somebody in the back of the head. Um, I did have issues with the torque converter kind of like overheating actually um, before. So I'm gonna have to, one of the projects on the go-kart rebuild is to make a 3D printed uh, air duct or at least scoops that are 3D printed and then use some hose or tubing from Home Depot or something to help kind of direct some air into the torque converter area with the cover on. Um, even though it's got these vents on here, it's still, I had issues with it kind of overheating. I don't know if anybody's else has ever had that maybe it wasn't overheating i don't know um, but basically the torque converter cover is very close to fitting nice uh, it just 
is slightly um, fouling on the back frame there with it in the fully back position. I mean, it's not off by much. Like I just have to put a shit down a little bit to get it to, to seat on the frame of the torque converter. So I'm gonna go on the mantra of work smarter, not harder. And I'm just gonna notch that um, piece out when it comes time to mounting it with like a Dremel tool instead of going in and notching a bunch of the frame up. But I think what I am gonna do just to give myself a little bit of extra clearance for the belt and whatnot is I'm going to use the Sawzall. I'm actually going to cut this bar out. Um, I never really was happy with this anyways, because the welding, trying to weld in this like slightly, really small gap was really hard and it doesn't look the greatest. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the Sawzall and cut that first bar out and then leave everything else. Um, just because, you know, I don't want to create a ton more work for myself that isn't necessary. And uh, I think, cause that would give me more time to do other things. So that's what I'm gonna do. I got the saw, new Sawzall blade. So I'm just gonna cut that little piece out and then uh, grind down any areas that kind of need to be cleaned up and possibly weld any joints that I uh, broke when I used the Sawzall. Okay, so the next task here is I got my exhaust header and right now it this is I'm pretty sure for a mini bike so it's designed to go out and go straight out underneath the seat but on the go-kart here it sticks out when you have the muffler on it sticks out way farther past um, the frame and it looks kind of funny so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna place this up on here and figure out I'm gonna make a cut with uh, my reciprocating saw. And then I'm gonna cut close to the um, weld, or not the welded, or yeah, I guess it's it's welded on, the threaded area for the muffler, and then I'll cut that and then join it so that it's closer. I just need to figure out where exactly I wanna cut um, to be able to uh, weld it back together. And then I have some high temperature black paint that I'm gonna throw on this and the muffler. Okay, so I got a little spot marked on there, kind of where I want to cut. I gave myself a little bit of extra material because obviously you can cut more away. You can't add material on. Um, so that way, when I make my cut here, you know, I can have some stuff to work with a little bit. Um, but now I'm going to put a new blade on the reciprocating saw. And we'll cut through this. I'm going to do my best to get a nice straight cut so that when we weld these two pieces back together, it's a nice clean mate. But I'll do the best I can. Actually, on second thought, I'm pretty sure it would be better to use a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder. I know the reciprocating saw can kind of get wonky sometimes, so change of plans. I'm going to put my cutoff wheel on that, and I uh, think that will give me a straighter cut uh, for this piece. All right, so I'm gonna test fit the uh, piece on here one last time before I kind of prep to uh, cut the other piece and then weld these two together. And also I'm gonna do it with the muffler so we can see kind of how it'll look. Cause I definitely wanna be able to run this thing with the muffler, especially like if I'm, uh, which way does this go? Definitely not that way. Especially uh, if I'm running in the neighborhood here, it's a little bit loud without it, so. So I think that's what I'm going for. I think I like that. It kind of, you know, and I was a little bit worried about directing the muffler this way because obviously you don't want hot air next to your intake, but because this is a very open 
uh, you know, it's not inside an engine bay covered up. I don't think we're gonna have a problem, you know. I think that's a pretty small, and this doesn't create a whole lot of heat anyways. And plus, well, I can, you know, get some header wrap or anything like that. But kind of like the look of that because it's all kind of going in the same direction. And I got the uh, other piece cut here. So this is the end that has the threads that mates to the muffler. And I'm pretty happy with uh, the mate here. So I tried to bevel the edge on the benchtop grinder a little bit so that the weld will penetrate a little bit better. But I think that's gonna turn out pretty good. So now my plan is I'm gonna put some magnets on here and just tack it in four spots, four equally spaced spots around. And then if that looks good, then we'll give it a full uh, bead weld all the way around. Well, this is interesting. Never had this happen to me before. <laughs> Literally like dripped. So any people who are welding experts out there, that's, they want to comment in on that. <laughs> it's kind of just funny, but I'm going to grind that down. Okay. So I got this guy all welded up, not too shabby. Still again, figuring out the settings on this thing and uh, how to get the best weld. I am by no means a, a professional welder. Definitely a DIY hobbier. I am, you know, my goal is to be transparent with you guys and just show you my welds here. And so this is, I did some light grinding with the angle grinder. And then most of this was the wire brush wheel on the angle grinder. And then I also wire brushed the rest of the piece because it was covered in surface rust um, to prep it for painting. And then what I'm doing now is doing the wire brush on the muffler because this is the remnants of the uh, chrome or whatever type of coating that just baked off. It was really bad before. So my hope is with this high temperature uh, spray paint, excuse me, that this will hold up a lot better. All right, so I got the engine up on the go-kart. I also went in and uh, I plugged this kind of area that was, when I cut this piece off, there was an open face. So I put a flat piece of metal in there and just kind of welded it flush and then ground that down as best I can looks a lot better than how it did before. Um, but now that I got the motor up there, I can kind of see the new angle and direction for the exhaust header. And I think it looks a lot better. I just really like how the header and the air filter kind of just are shooting off this way. And again, I don't think any hot gas radiating over here towards the intake is gonna be much of a problem or anything. I think it's gonna be fine just cause it's an open space. If we were talking about close quarters, like in an engine bay, then you might consider otherwise. Um, but this is a, uh, I was pretty happy with this uh, and how it turned out. And you know, this cleaned up pretty well. And uh, now the final step here is I'm gonna throw a coat of um, high temperature black paint on it. Um, and then that will seal that deal. And uh, we will be done for today. All right, guys, one last thing before I end this video. I just want to show you the last bit of the go-kart that I've done as far as the rebuild process. I didn't necessarily film this, or I didn't film it, because I was doing, I was multitasking in the day I was doing this, so it was kind of hard to do all that and film at the same time. But I want to catch you guys up on it before I ended this video so you guys kind of know where the go-kart is at. Also, peep the new Corvette hood that I picked up, so... Yes, I will have a Ronald McDonald themed Corvette for a little bit before I get it painted. But, uh, and that's another thing. I'm going to be doing an update video on the build plan for this because it's changed a lot. So, uh, sidebar, but I know this is a go-kart video. But anyways, 
So what I've done to the go-kart here is I completely recoded and repainted the frame. So you can still see the blue tape on the shocks that I masked off. So what I did was on the front end here and the whole bottom side, so this is where the pedal plate goes and the front bumper mounts to, this is all coated in that truck bed coating and the whole bottom side of the go-kart is the truck bed coating too, just because that stuff is really durable to scratching. And so there's been times since the go-kart's so low that it runs up on like a curb or something. Um, but then the whole top side, I repainted in that duple color metal cast paint. It's one of my favorite spray paints as far as how it looks. It, it is like, uh, it mimics kind of an anodized finish. Um, and you can see the, the shininess of the metal. Like if you flap this, the metal, and you made it really nice and shiny, you can see that through the paint. And so I just added a few extra coats of that because these guys needed to get painted again in all the areas where I welded and whatnot. So it's definitely looking a lot nicer than it was with the original paint. So I'm excited now. Basically the next step is to start reassembling this thing and getting it ready to drive.